Hello and welcome to this session. I am Raghav. In this session, we are going to see some real-world examples of parameterization. In the earlier session, we have already seen what is parameterization and how do we parameterize our test data. And parameterization helps us to do data-driven testing. Now in this session, we are going to see some really good examples of parameterization and we will also see how to parameterize state field. So this is a very common scenario that in your testing, you will need to run your scenario or your test cases with a current date or a future date at every iteration. And this is exactly what we are going to do today. So this is going to be very easy and very interesting. I will go to my XLQ account and I have already logged in. Let me also show you the scenario we are going to automate. So this is the QBank application and I will log in with the username John Todd and password pass123. And here you can see we have a funds transfer link. I will go here and here we have the funds transfer page where we can do a funds transfer. We have a drop down here, transfer from or transfer to drop down. I can put some amount here and then here you can see we have a date field and this date should always be the current date or the future date for this scenario to succeed. And then there is a memo field and then I can click on the submit button. So let me first create a context for this page. I will go to XLQ and I will go to this plus button here and select context and I will name my context. So let me say this is funds transfer page and description is optional. I will say save and continue and here I will click on record new view and because this page is already open on a new tab, I'm getting an option here. So I will say analyze. And now here you can see this XLQ Chrome extension icon is blinking. I will select this and say start. And while the recording is in progress, do not move your cursor or do not go to any other page. Let the recording complete. And this is done. And here we have this. It has identified 153 elements here. I will say accept and OK. Now I can go to the view and add all the elements. But as of now, I will just go ahead and let me also create a context for the next page. That will be the confirmation page for funds transfer. Yes, this is the page. I will again create a new context. And here I will say this is funds transfer confirmation page and save and continue and I can record a view for this as well and in Excel queue you can also record a view or create a context uh, on the fly while you are creating actions so it is very flexible but let me just create these two contexts now and this is done and accept and OK. So these two contexts are created. I will now go and create an action. I will select action from here. And I will say the action name is populate funds transfer. And it starts in the funds transfer page context and you can see here we have the new context just in case you do not find the context and you want to create a new context you can directly create from here as of now I have already created this destination context is funds transfer confirmation page save and continue and here I will start writing my commands now as we have seen earlier you can start typing here and then you will get the auto suggestions as well and a really easy and straightforward way is you can see we have this view here at the bottom you will see this is view which is collapsed I will select this to expand the view and then I can directly go to the element do a right click and I can select the commands from here so I am getting this suggestion select item in the drop down I will select this and the item or the text I want to select is salary account 
and here because I have not already saved this element or added this element in the element repository I'm getting a option here I will give some name I will say this is transfer from drop down and add element and here you can see uh, all these properties are being used to identify this element or locate this element and here we are getting this information here for the class and it says here this attribute may be unreliable for element identification so review it before uh, using it so let me just remove this and if I remove this still I am able to identify the element uniquely so you can see it is still getting a single count that means it's working so let me remove the class update and save similarly for the next statement I will go to the next element transfer to drop down select element select item in the drop down apartment rental and I will name this as transfer to drop down add element and again I will remove the class and update and save then I have to enter the amount I will right click enter text in element I'll give some text here and the name I will give is amount input and save it and then comes the date field so I will right click I will select enter text in element for now and I will give the current date which is 11.30.2019 this is mmddyyyy and then I will say this is transaction date add the element then we have the memo field I will say enter text and I can give any text here and the element I will say is memo input and then finally I have to click on the submit button so I will do a right click click and this is the element name given which is fine I will say add element and save so you can see the action is now created now I can parameterize the test data whatever I want to so this is the first drop down I will click here and if I click on this icon here I am getting this option literal action parameter or global property I will select action parameter and as of now because I have not added any parameter I am not getting any suggestions here I will select here new action input and it brings up this new action input window I will say the name for this parameter is transfer from and save similarly for the next test data I will click here action parameter new action input I will say this is transfer to and save then for this amount as well I'm going to parameterize this data and I am going to give it the name amount and then comes the date field so I will also parameterize the date field I will click here and say action parameter and new action input and I will say transaction date and save now we have the memo field test data which is not required to get parameterized as we can use the same text here for every iteration and therefore we do not require to parameterize this test data and this is important sometimes users tend to parameterize each and every test data which is not required so use parameterization intelligently parameterize only the data that you want to or need to parameterize so this is done and if I go to these params section here you can see all these parameters are created now I can create a scenario I will go to this plus button here and say scenario 
and I will say the name is validate fund transfer and description is optional I will say save and continue and here I will say add steps and we have to start with login page this we had created earlier login to QBank so this will log into the application then goes to the account summary page where we should be having a action to navigate to funds transfer and we have not yet created that action so before I create this scenario I have to create that action I will go to new actions and say navigate to funds transfer and here the action where this context belongs will be account summary page and the destination should be the funds transfer page save and continue and here I have to create an action to click on the link for funds transfer so if I go to this view here at the bottom if I click here it will show me the account summary page view and here we have funds transfer I will do a right click and select the click action and this is done and that's all we need to do here also if I go to the context if I go to the navigator and go to the contexts you can see we have all our new context that we created now are available here although there is a information icon here so if I go inside these context and if I go to info you can see it says synchronization not defined for the context so I can click here to add the sync element and I can select any element for example I can say transfer from drop down and this should exist so this will become a sync element for this page similarly if I go to the other context which is funds transfer confirmation page and again I have to create a sync element so here if I see this page the sync element should be unique to this page so if I select anything from here from this section this is not unique to this page this is a common thing similarly if I see this top elements log out button and all these these are also common and these are not unique to this particular page so what is unique is uh, this button so let me just add this button I will say add to repository add this element and I will say save and here I will say uh, this is go to account summary button and I'm also getting this option here to mark this as a sync element I will select this I will say yes exists and add so this is done so the sync element should be unique and it should be always available and should be the slowest element so that works as a sync element so this is done now I can go back to my scenario and before I go let me also show you this global search here so you can see this is a global search icon and if you select this you can start typing anything if I say validate you can see I'm getting these options validate successful login and validate funds transfer so everything matching your search criteria will be shown and then you can also see sections for example this is available in scenarios if I say if I go to global search and I say login now you can see login is present in context login page then we have action login to QBank and scenario validate successful login so this global search will be very useful so I will go and search for validate and I want to go to validate funds transfer and I am now in this scenario now I can add the steps again I will start with login page login to QBank then in the account summary page I will say navigate to funds transfer in the funds transfer page I will say populate funds transfer and that's it I will save and this is done now I can create test cases I will go to the test cases section and I can click on this button or I can also add from here so I will select this I will say the test case name validate funds transfer with 
current or future date and here you can see all the parameters we have added so these two parameters username and password we created in our earlier session so let me give the username which is john Todd, and the password and I can encrypt using this encrypt tool I can get an encrypted value for the password password is pass123 I will encrypt and this is the encrypted value I'll copy and paste it here now in the transfer from drop down I will say salary account transfer to apartment rental amount I'll put some amount here transaction date as of now I will put the current date and add an exit and I can run this test case now now this is fine this will work fine today however if I run this test tomorrow this will break because this is a current date today but this will become a past date tomorrow so this will fail so I need to use relative dates here so I will go to my action I will go to my action populate funds transfer and here before the transaction date I will say if I say date add you can see we are getting suggestions here so we have add to date add to current date add to current time and so on you can also see the information so I will say add to current date and here I am getting this statement get date which is this number of days from today so I will say get date which is one day and the format I want to use is mmddyyyy and now if you see here we have this option to capture whatever is the date created into a parameter so I will select this capture and I have the option to create parameter as action output or local parameter now I'm okay with local parameter as I do not want to use it outside I just want to use this parameter within this action so I will say local parameter and create a new local parameter and I will name this as let us say future date and that's it I will save this and now I have got my future date in this parameter future date I can use this instead of the transaction date here so I will select this and say local parameter and select future date here so now this will run with a future date that is one day from today and also I can parameterize this number as well so that I can actually select what number of days I want from today's date so I will select this and say action parameter and I will create a new action input and I will say number of days from today and save it so while running the test I can select the number of days now also the transaction date parameter that we created earlier is now not required so you can you see it was here we are now using future date here I can delete this parameter so I will delete this so that it does not show up while we are creating a test case and in the local parameter we have this future date created so now I will go back to my scenario and go to the test case and click on the test case and now you can see we have now got a new parameter number of days from today let me say one day and save and now I can run this I will click on this run button here and I can select my local agent is running so I will select my local agent here and say run and let us see the progress so this has started if I see the local agent yes it has started here so this has started execution if I look at my local agent you can see it is running here it says execution started so we should have a browser coming up and we can see the execution so it brings up a Chrome browser and it will go to the QBank application and logs in 
goes to funds transfer and you can see it has taken a future date that is one day from today if I go back to Excel queue and see the results you can see we are getting the results here and let me show you the date here so if you see here you can see the date entered is 121209 which is one day from today so this is working fine and this is how you can parameterize the date field so today we learned we understood the parameterization with real world examples also it is very important not to over parameterize only parameterize the data that you really need to for example in this session we did not parameterize the memo field as it was not required and while working with dates we go with the relative approach as we have seen in this session so i hope this session was very useful for you and now you can very effectively and confidently use parameterization in excel queue i hope all this was very useful thank you for watching